My name is Marlena Snellick with A-Plus College Ready, and we are ready to start part four of our notes on solutions. So now we are going to talk about the conductivity of solutions. So some solutions have the ability to conduct electricity, and some solutions do not have the ability to conduct electricity. And this depends on whether the substance is a non-electrolyte or an electrolyte. So a non-electrolyte is a substance that does not produce ions or dissociate in a solvent, and an electrolyte is a substance that does produce ions and dissociates in a solvent. So a non-electrolyte cannot conduct electricity, and an electrolyte can. Remember, electricity has to have charged particles, so we need, the, we need ions in the solution in order to be able to conduct electricity. So this is why electrolytes can and non-electrolytes cannot. So before we go any further, you have to understand the concept of dissociation. So dissociation is when you put a solute in a solvent and the solvent causes the solute to dissociate or to break apart. So in this case, we are looking at a salt crystal of sodium chloride and water is our solvent. And so what happens is, is the ions, the sodium and the chlorine, become more attracted to the water molecules than they are to each other. And so the water molecules causes them to separate, and in this case, it forms what we call a hydration shell around the ions. Now, we call this a hydration shell here because water is the solvent. If water was not the solvent, then we would just call it a solvent shell. So it's the same thing. So in this case, notice my sodium is positive in yellow, and so what surrounds the positive sodium are the negative ends of the water molecule. Remember, water is polar, so it has an end that's slightly positive where the hydrogens are and is slightly negative where the water is. And so the slightly negative end of the water where the oxygen is is attracted to those positive sodiums, and those slightly positive hydrogen ends of the water molecule are attracted to the negative chlorines. So they surround them and form a hydration shell. So this is what dissociation is. And so if um, a solute dissociates and forms these ions in water, then we say it's an electrolyte. If it does not, then we say it is a non-electrolyte. So depending on whether it conducts electricity or not is also going to depend on the strength of the electrolyte. And so the strength is not talking about the concentration, it is talking about how much of it dissociates. So a strong electrolyte, almost 100% of the solute is going to dissociate. So since almost 100% dissociates, we get a lot of ions in the solution. So a strong electrolyte is going to be a strong conductor of electricity. A weak electrolyte has very little dissociation. So because not all of it dissociates into ions, we don't have a lot of charged particles, so it's going to be a very poor conductor of electricity. And then, of course, a non-electrolyte is not going to dissociate at all, so no current can flow, so we would get no electricity that can be conducted. So that would be the lesson on conductivity of a solutions. I hope you learned something and I will see you next time for the next part.